There are so many supplements out there, and most of them do absolutely nothing. But looking through the human clinical trials, there are nine supplements that actually make a difference to our health. And the first three are fantastic for muscle performance. So in this video, I'll show you what these supplements are and the scientific evidence behind why they work, the popular supplements to avoid and save your money, because a critical new study has just been published. And if I could only have one supplement, what supplement would it be? Here are the first of three supplements for muscle performance, and then we'll have a look at a supplement that improves memory and cognition. The first supplement is the most widely studied of all, and the evidence is so strong that the International Society of Sports Nutrition concluded that it is the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes in terms of increasing high-intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass during training. It also helps with muscle recovery after exercise, and luckily for us, the initial safety concerns have been disproven. Specifically, we know that there is no link to hair loss, it does not increase uric acid levels, Levels. It poses no health risks to our kidneys, it's not associated with dehydration or muscle cramping, and it increases lean muscle mass, not fat mass. The supplement is creatine monohydrate, and I take 5 grams every day. But remember that just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. But what most people don't know about creatine is the emerging evidence for improvements on cognitive performance, and there's a second, specific supplement that we'll talk about later in the video as well for improved cognition. So creatine supplements not only increase muscle creatine stores, but also brain creatine stores, and this is especially important during times of stress, such as sleep disruption and even aging itself. During these challenges, it can cause the levels of brain creatine to decrease, and multiple random clinical trials have investigated creatine supplements and its effects on cognitive performance, and those trials were combined into a meta-analysis published in August 2022. The analysis concluded that creatine supplementation enhances measures of memory performance in healthy individuals, especially older adults. That provides another reason for me to supplement with creatine 5 grams a day. And now for the second of three supplements for muscle performance. There's a striking correlation between decreased muscle strength and increased death rates even after adjusting for other risk factors. So we want to maximize muscle strength in youth, maintain our strength in middle age, and minimize the loss in older age. And we know from multiple lines of evidence that higher protein intakes improve the muscle building response to exercise, which is why the clinical guidelines suggest to increase protein intake. So what is the perfect level of protein intake to maximize the benefits of exercise? Well, a 2018 meta-analysis that combined 49 studies found that protein intake of 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day maximized the muscle performance improvements from resistance exercise, and older adults may even need a higher amount, up to 2 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. That's because their digestion of systems, they're not as great at absorbing the protein from the diet, and they also experience accelerated muscle loss as they age. But that's a lot of protein. For someone weighing 80 kilograms, that equates to about 128 grams of protein each day. Now, to put that into perspective, beef is only 25% protein, so to reach that protein target, it would require an 80 kilogram individual to eat about half a kilogram of beef per day. But from a British medical journal analysis, we can see that higher protein intakes are not only associated with improved muscle strength, but also with lower death rates. And protein powders are a great way to help reach these protein targets. And that's the second supplement that I'm talking about. The protein is highly bioavailable, but just make sure that the protein that you select doesn't have added sugar and salt. And when selecting protein, it's important to factor in what their leucine content is. So leucine is an essential amino acid and it plays a pivotal role in initiating muscle protein synthesis. It's one of the key elements that determines the quality of protein, especially in the context of muscle building and maintenance. So whey protein, for example, is typically rich in leucine. But for those following a plant-based diet, achieving the same amount of leucine intake, it may require a higher amount of overall protein consumption. 
But don't worry, there are excellent plant-based protein powder options available. For example, pea protein or brown rice protein and even soy protein. Now with soy protein, there's a popular myth on social media that soy increases estrogen. But an updated meta-analysis confirms that soy protein it does not have any effect on testosterone, free testosterone or estrogen levels in men. It also used to be thought that protein timing was important, that we wanted to spread our protein intake throughout the day. But new research suggests that that isn't nearly as important compared to total daily protein intake. The third and final supplement for muscle performance works by accelerating the recycling of our cell's energy storage, called ATP, and it also enhances muscle protein synthesis. But there is controversy with the supplement. A 2017 analysis found that of the seven studies published at the time, only two of those studies showed improvements in muscle strength or power. So what's going on? Well, here's the crucial point. When the supplement is combined with exercise, then there's a muscle performance improvement compared to just exercise alone. Otherwise, there's no effect. The supplement is called TMG, and there's a second benefit of taking TMG, which I'll cover shortly. But first, since that 2017 analysis, other studies have been published, such as this one in 2021. TMG improved muscle performance of soccer players compared to a placebo or a dummy pill. But it's not just the muscle performance benefits for why I take TMG. In 2020, a large review was done to try and identify the risk factors for developing Alzheimer's disease. One of those risk factors was a high level of homocysteine in the blood. Now, I want to be clear that we're very early in the research journey on this, and it's not a done deal. We still need to do a lot more studies before confirming that TMG can reduce dementia rates. But just like creating supplements, it offers another reason to consider taking TMG. So I take 500 milligrams daily, and I include it in microvitamin. And again, just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. But on the point of brain health, the fourth supplement that I take, I take specifically for cognitive performance and memory. And then we'll have a look at two supplements for heart health. Now, a massive study in 2022 called the Cosmos Mind Study was published, and it involved over 2,000 people. The study ran for three years, and in the group who took the supplement, compared to the placebo or dummy pill, they had a statistically significant benefit on global cognition. This supplement was a multivitamin and mineral supplement, and to be clear, this supplement should in no way replace a great whole food diet and regular exercise. And it was because of the Cosmos Mind study results that inspired me to create my own multivitamin and mineral called microvitamin. Now, at the time, I was already taking separate supplements of vitamin B3, D3, K2, zinc, and magnesium. But when I looked for a multivitamin and mineral supplement that could combine all of those supplements together and met my requirements, I couldn't find one. Specifically, I didn't want to take vitamin A or E. I didn't want to mega dose, and most of the existing products didn't contain vitamin K2. Plus, I wanted to have magnesium in the form of magnesium taurate for the reasons that I explain in this video here. Overall, reaching our recommended daily intakes of micronutrients is a good idea, and the Cosmos Mind results provide strong justification to supplement with a multivitamin and mineral. But again, just because I supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. The fifth supplement I take is to reduce my heart attack risk. So from a large trial called the VITAL trial involving over 25,000 people, the group who took the supplement had an unexpectedly high 28% reduction in the risk of having a heart attack, and that was compared to the group who took the placebo. But just like my warning about megadosing with vitamins and minerals, there are significant risks of megadosing with this supplement as well, including an increased risk of developing an abnormal heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation. So I only take about one gram of omega-3 as a mixture of EPA and DHA. The sixth supplement I take is also for heart health, and then we'll have a look at two supplements that reduce skin wrinkles. This supplement helps to feed the bacteria that grow in our gut, and through this mechanism, we see improvements in insulin sensitivity, blood sugar levels, blood pressure, and cholesterol. So I take between three and five grams of psyllium husk every day. But when looking at psyllium husk brands, you need to be aware of the lead content. So from an analysis done by ConsumerLab.com, Yerba Primer and Now Foods had very low levels of lead. So those are the brands that I use. And just like protein powder, it can be mixed into smoothies or shakes, and it helps keep you fuller for longer. 
The next two supplements have strong evidence that they reduce skin wrinkles and improve skin hydration. Then I'll go through a supplement for sleep. The first supplement has evidence from multiple clinical trials that it reduces skin wrinkles by about 8%. And the first supplement is collagen peptides, but it's not without its controversy. Collagen peptides are short chains of amino acids and amino acids make up protein. So one interesting question is whether simply supplementing with protein would offer the same benefits as collagen collagen peptides. Well, the body can absorb these short amino acid chains and they're transported to the skin. So in a 2020 randomized controlled trial of burn patients, one group took protein and the other group took a matching amount of collagen peptides. The collagen peptide group experienced a significantly higher wound healing rate compared to the protein group, suggesting that collagen peptides do indeed have benefits to the skin beyond regular protein intake. The benefits were confirmed in an analysis that combined 23 separate randomized clinical trials together, where collagen peptides were shown to improve skin hydration and elasticity. So I take between 10 to 15 grams of collagen peptides every day. And keeping with the theme of improving skin health, the eighth supplement that I take is hyaluronic acid 200 milligrams. And I made a detailed video about hyaluronic acid recently, which you can find here. But just like collagen peptide supplements, we have multiple randomized clinical trials showing that hyaluronic acid improves skin wrinkles. And this study in 2021 showed an 18.8% .8 improvement. I take 200 milligrams as part of microvitamin. The ninth supplement on the list is for sleep, and then I'll mention an additional supplement before we have a look at a new study suggesting that we should avoid a few popular supplements and save our money. So low-dose melatonin supplements have great evidence from human studies showing improvements in the time it takes to fall asleep and sleep quality, but the big issue is dose and timing. Melatonin helps to regulate our sleep-wake cycle, so taking a low-dose melatonin supplement only works if you take it around two hours before you want to fall asleep. Then there's the issue of dose. The body creates up to 80 micrograms of melatonin an hour while we sleep. So that equates to about 640 micrograms for an eight hour sleep. But many melatonin supplements have doses much, much higher than that. And we don't have the long-term safety data about mega dosing melatonin supplements. So personally, I take 300 micrograms about two hours before wanting to fall asleep. But melatonin doesn't only have effects on sleep. There's also antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. This is especially important to consider with respect to aging. And on the point of antioxidants, there's one extra supplement I want to mention before discussing some supplements to avoid and save your money. So from the age of 45, a powerful antioxidant called glutathione starts to decrease. So by supplementing with the building blocks of glutathione, we can support our glutathione levels and the body can control those levels of glutathione. A small study in 2022 explored this idea where they gave older adults a combination of glycine and NAC supplements and compared it to a placebo. The glycine and NAC group had significant improvements in their mitochondrial health. Now we're very early in the research journey on this and out of everything that I've discussed so far, this strategy has got the least evidence. But from the age of 45, I'd consider taking a glycine and NAC supplement around one gram. Now, as promised, a new study has come out suggesting that a few popular supplements in the longevity space have no effect. This study is from the Interventions Testing Program, and they tested a supplement called calcium alpha ketoglutarate. There was no lifespan extension effect seen. This program also found no effects for nicotinamide riboside and fisetin, which just like calcium alpha ketoglutarate, are incredibly popular in the longevity space. These results are important because the hype around all three of these supplements came from my studies. But when the gold standard of my studies, the Interventions Testing Program, found no effect with the these supplements, personally I wouldn't buy them. Instead, if I had to choose only one supplement out of all of the ones that I've mentioned in this video, hands down it would be creatine for the reasons that I explain in this video here. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.